Alright guys, Quantum here bringing you a Battlefield 3 Trophy Slash Achievement video. I know that sounds weird considering it's a multiplayer video, but the point of this video is actually to show you how to get a lot of points in Conquest. Uh, this video, the point of it is to aid in my trophy guide that I wrote on ps3trophies.org. I'll put a link in the description if you want to see how to get every single trophy in Battlefield 3, get the Platinum Trophy, you know, brag to all your friends that you got it. It's a pretty long, um, semi-difficult Platinum in my opinion. So it's pretty prestigious, it's cool, it's fun, it's all the guide is 100% by me, uh, most of the videos and stuff like that are made by me and, and so forth. But basically what I'm going to do is show you how to effectively capture and take objectives. Um, this is how not to do it. Don't run past an objective, you want to wait there until you capture the objective before you move ahead. So the first thing you don't want to do is try to you know get too excited and just leave the objective that's very stupid of me and I just cost me 200 points um, so I'm just gonna discuss a little bit of a, a tactic here now these these maps this is Karag Island and there's a lot of vehicles on this map there's about two tanks per team and a lot of Jeeps uh, you plant anti-tank mines as an engineer after you've unlocked them um, right on the objective and you can get anywhere from 250 to 550 points simply by having an enemy run over those anti-tank mines in a jeep or a tank and you're gonna see that happen uh, very shortly it's pretty it's pretty sick <laughs> um, planting it right on the objective will give you flag defend points as well and likely give you a double or even a triple kill um, as well as you know disable vehicle and vehicle destroy uh, points as well so there I'm just destroying enemy stuff, enemy jeeps and enemies in general and I'm getting massive amounts of points. Um, I see a helicopter coming towards me so I avoided that and well, I heard the helicopter. There you see a tank going to sea and it rolled over my anti-tank mines. I got two vehicle disables, vehicle destroyed, enemy killed, vehicle destroyed again. So I destroyed two vehicles, a double kill. Uh, it's I got 565 points like it's just insane simply from laying my anti-tank mines down right on the objective so that's a really effective tactic if you're an engineer and you have the AT mines to do um, now playing the planting the anti-tank mines is risky because you're vulnerable right so you kind of want to do it at the beginning of the game or after you've sure the objective is clear of enemies and so check it out right here um, my tank is pretty leveled up so I got a coaxial LMG mounted on my shell launcher I don't know what it's called um, but I can switch between those weapons by hitting the triangle button and the shells aren't really that effective unless you hit a direct hit on an enemy so it's really only good for taking out uh, enemy vehicles, campers, stuff like that, buildings um, you want to have another weapon like this LMG uh, this light machine gun that I have mounted on my tank to take out direct enemies you know coming towards you maybe it's a support class trying to plant C4 on your tank or something like that um, the LMG is a really effective weapon um, or even if you like you flush an enemy out with a shell, you don't kill them, you get a big hit detection and then they start running out. Switch to your uh, coaxial LMG with triangle. If you see them running across, you fire a couple bullets, you should be able to pick them off, no problem. Since they're already damaged from your shell. But the shell, I mean, it doesn't really have that big of a blast radius, so which, which is fair considering how powerful the tank could be in retrospect to the game. So that's fair, in my opinion. But basically what you want to do for a lot of points here, um, in addition to planting mines and stuff at objectives, is uh, stick between two main points that you see are getting captured a lot, like B and C on this map are fairly close to each other, and I'm just switching between those points recapturing the flags. Now a little note about capturing the flags is that if you're the first person to reach a flag for either neutralizing it or capturing it, you'll get an additional 50 points onto like just going there while it's being captured so if you're like the first person there you'll get 200 points for neutralizing 250 for capturing that's 550 points total for like less than a minute of of capturing a flag which is pretty sick so um you can get a lot of work done a lot of points by doing that now if you get to a flag that's already being neutralized uh you'll get 150 points instead of 200 but if you stay there and wait out the flag capture you'll get the full 250 since you were there from the beginning of the flag capture if you reach to a flag capture after it's already being captured you'll only get 200 points instead of the 250 hopefully that was clear if it's not let me know in the comments section I'll, I'll be glad to clarify it with a uh, with a response but 
basically the, if you're the first one there while it's being neutralized or captured you'll get more points that's what you got to take away from what i just said now on my tank i have it pretty leveled up i don't know if i already said this but um the perks that i got on my tank are the auto loader which replaces my shells faster like reloads the shells faster and the reason i have that on is because um when I get into firefights with tanks, I should be able to win since my shells are firing faster than theirs. And I also have the Coaxial LMG, which I already discussed. And I also have the Maintenance Perk, which automatically repairs my tank a little bit faster than normal. And the reason for that is because, um, generally, I can maneuver my way away from RPGs, like people shooting uh, javelins or, or just regular RPGs at my tank, or even just tank versus tank battles. And to have that extra quick repair is really effective. Now this this right here is uh you know something you you might have to practice a bit to get good at but when you go tank versus tank warfare um your tank can generally take two shells before it's disabled like on the third shot it'll, it'll be disabled so you kind of want to avoid getting hit three times with either a uh shells or rpgs because it'll disable your tank and you'll have to get out because it'll get destroyed unless you can repair it but if you get out and try to repair it you'll likely get killed so you know try to avoid getting hit as much as possible but if you get in tank versus tank battle you got to try to avoid the enemy shells and land your shells on the enemy tank and if you can do that you'll win most of your firefights with tanks no problem and an effective tactic while it's not the the best sometimes uh, if you see an enemy that's really close to your tank and you want a really easy kill just get out of your tank because generally they won't know what to do they'll try to be running away from your tank or they'll try to pull out an rpg to shoot your tank and if you can get out of your tank and likely not get hit with the RPG they're firing at your tank, you can pick up a really easy kill. Um, it is sometimes effective to do that because if you see a guy rushing your tank and he has like a big backpack or something on, he's likely a support class character. And the reason they're rushing your tank is because they want to plant C4 on it. So get out of your tank, uh, kill the support class guy, and get back in your tank, assuming you can. Now... This leads to another problem, which if you get out of a vehicle, it's very likely that an enemy can take your vehicle. And this, I've done this so many times to enemies, and it's even happened to me a couple times. Um, you you typically just want to die with with your tank if you have one, because you don't want to risk giving the enemy the enemy team an additional tank, and then your team will have one less tank to deal with, which can be extremely detrimental uh, to your progress in winning a game. So it's almost better to just die with the tank than risk getting out, getting killed, and having an enemy repair the tank that they were trying to destroy and then get back in it. and then, Or sorry, just get in it and, and have three tanks versus your one now instead of two versus two tanks. So something to just be wary of. And I know not all the maps have tanks, and some, and some of you guys may say, well, this is not really relevant because I may not always get a tank in every matchup. And yeah, that's true. But generally... Um, this, this, the tips that I'm giving you for just general gameplay hold hold true. Um, you just mo maneuver around from, from map to map. Use cover effectively. Uh, you don't have to be right on the flag to capture it. You can generally be a good 20, maybe even 30 plus meters away from the flag and, and still capture it. So don't go right on the flag because it's, it's usually out in the open and you'll be seen. So, I mean, in a tank, you are more visible and more vulnerable, but this team just wasn't using RPGs that much, so, you know, I just stayed in my tank for about half the match before it finally got destroyed, and I got a ton of points this way. Alright, so now I want to talk a little bit about the ribbons and the medals that you can earn while playing Conquest. While you play, you're going to get a lot of flag uh, capture medals or ribbons and flag defend ribbons most likely. And each of those I think gives you around 200 XP. So that's pretty good. And you get that from getting uh, five flag captures and four flag defends or vice versa, four captures and five defends. I don't really remember. But anyways, that's going to get you a lot of XP at the end of the round. They're, they're, all the ribbons are going to tally up and you should get somewhere between, um, I don't know, 10 to 15 ribbons if you've been really capping flags and, and getting kills and getting kill streaks, uh, like getting a, a kill streak in a tank is really easy. So, uh, like earlier in the video, you saw me get two combat efficiency met, uh, ribbons, and that's worth 500 XP each. So, that's pretty powerful stuff. And now this is where it gets kind of complicated. You can take down a pen and paper, but honestly, I just recommend, like I said in my trophy guide, 
register for battle log it'll track all your stats and you can kind of piece together what you want to do in terms of what ribbons and medals you want to earn and really get things done so to start off I'm gonna just talk about how the ribbons and the medals kind of stack on each other here when you get a ribbon it, it gives you XP right you get the XP for the ribbon which is like 200 to 500 XP per ribbon and when you get a certain amount of ribbons you get the medal now I'm gonna use the assault rifle as an example whenever you get seven kills with an assault rifle you're gonna get around 700 points right because each kills with 100 points you know not including any bonuses like headshots or double kills or anything like that but 700 points of XP that's pretty cool then you get the 200 points for getting the ribbon so that's 900 now getting 50 of those is 350 kills 7 kills per ribbon times 50 ribbons now that will give you an assault rifle medal okay now 350 kills is 35,000 points worth of killing XP in addition to that the ribbons 200 points per ribbon times 50 ribbons is 10,000 XP so that's 45,000 XP now on top of that that's an extra bonus for getting the 50 ribbons you're gonna get the assault rifle medal which is an, an additional 10,000 XP so right there that's 55,000 XP from just using the assault rifle to get kills now if you add on top of that the fact that if you use the assault kit to, with the assault rifles you're going to get uh, service stars for that kit most likely and level that kit up that's another 10,000 XP plus the guns that you use for every 100 kills you get on, a, on an assault rifle you get service stars 2,000 XP for every 100 kills you get on an assault rifle so the XP just mounts and really, really adds up if you kind of coordinate and organize uh, what guns you want to use, what ribbons you want to go for, what medals you want to work towards. Um, and all that is very easily done through the battle log. I make a, I have a little notepad right beside my, uh, my controller. I just write down, I have my laptop, I just open up battle log. I say, okay, well, I'm really close to my second combat efficiency medal, so I'm going to really try to get some kill streak. So my score per minute may suffer, but... In return, I get a big XP boost from getting the 10,000 XP that I get from the Combat Efficiency Medal. And that's where you really have to kind of, you know, decide uh, what things you want to go for and, and when. Um, obviously, though, winning the matches, being the MVP, getting the A squad, that's 1,500 points instantly, right? Because 500 points per each ribbon. So that's going to boost up your score a lot by the end of the matches. And uh, if you can get those combat efficiency ribbons for, for those kill streaks, again, those are an extra 500. Those are, for some people, really easy to get. For others, it can be really hard. Don't sweat it if you can't get it. It's not at all necessary, but it does help a lot. And, uh, I mean, I got two at the end of this match, and combined with the first place MVP and A squad and winning the match, that's an additional 2,500 on top of the 8,000 that I earned in the game. And I didn't even earn any medals this game. I could have easily gotten upwards of 22,000 points this game alone. So just something to keep an eye on for that. Also, the, the leveling process, um, it does increase incrementally as you reach every 10 levels or so. Like, uh, I think from levels 1 to 10, it was only 20,000 XP. And then from levels 10 to 20, it was 30,000. Uh, levels 20 to 30 was 40. And now levels... 30 to 40 or 40 to 50 one of the two is 50,000 whatever I'm on right now it takes 50,000 XP to level up so it takes approximately 1.875 million XP I think I said that already but it's quite a grind um, depends on your score per minute how fast you're going to get there as well as your medals and ribbons that you earn and service stars and all that stuff so I would honestly say for an average FPS player um, maybe 70 80 hours um, I consider myself a little bit above average so I think I'll actually be able to get to level 45 in uh, like maybe 55 to 60 hours and my KD is is 1.8 right now and my score per minute is 430 and uh, again if you have a high score per minute and you're earning a lot of those ribbons generally they, they go hand in hand right I mean you generally have a high score per minute and a high KD together, but sometimes you have to compromise between either one to, to earn medals and stuff. So, but like I said, um, it's just going to take time and patience. The game is really fun though, so I mean, it shouldn't be any problem for anybody aiming for this platinum trophy. But again, register for Battle Log. Uh, just look it up on Google. Battle Log is the first link. You just register 
with your email is really easy and then it'll automatically sync up to your ID and you'll be able to see all your stats everything that you've earned everything that you're gonna earn all your unlocks all your kits all your you know progression with this kit that kit this weapon kills accuracy upcoming unlocks like it has everything it's 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 honestly amazing it almost made me consider getting call of duty elite if, if call of duty elite was going to be that good but um i don't think i will i don't think it's worth whatever call of duty was charging 50 or 60 bucks a year but um i find myself looking at battle log in, in, in my classes when i'm in lectures just thinking about you know what what, what am i going to work towards next when i go home like this game is that addicting to me right now and i mean it's i picked it up the day after its release because i was busy on the day of the release and uh like within five days i was level 38 it's it's pretty crazy so i'm really addicted to this game <laughs> it's awesome but uh that's pretty much it for what you can do for leveling um you know just keep playing practicing every map is different you know once you again uh, i've said this on pretty much every other shooter game that i've uploaded from call of duty crisis you name it anything um once you know the maps the game becomes a lot easier like in, in my opinion map knowledge is 50 percent of of the battle in first person shooters so i mean i played a lot of these maps a lot of times i know the routes i should take i know what routes i should avoid i know generally where people will plant anti-tank mines so i i look on the grounds and, and around those areas i shoot them out whatever you know that kind of stuff you know what routes to take you know where good cover is etc etc you know once you got all that down you know your your score per minute and stuff like that your your performance in the game will, will increase dramatically like i started this game with a 3.6 kd it went down to 1.5 now it's back up to 1.8 with over 2,000 kills so uh, map knowledge plays a huge role huge huge role so this match is just about coming to an end check this out try to knife him and i fail <laughs> I shouldn't have bothered to try to knife. That was an unnecessary death, but whatever. Uh, 15 and 3 is not that bad of a score. But if you have any questions or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer anything you guys have to ask. But uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, check out the other videos. Got lots of Battlefield 3 content on there, as well as more coming on the way. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys. Quantum is out.